and welcome to the Three Dad Bods podcast. We're back and we're ready to entertain and put a smile on your face. Brent, Carl, and Sean are full of useless information. Just ask their kids. But we can't wait to share stories about the past and make your day a bit brighter. Now buckle in, put those earphones on, and enjoy the ride. Three Dad Bods is back and about to begin. Good morning, everybody. This is episode number two, guys. Made we great yes. up right here. Finally got it. <laughs> I'm Brent. We got Carl and Sean. And before we jump into stuff, um, uh, just a special thanks one to my little girl Maya. She's not so little anymore, but for making our our logo for our podcast, and two oh, for yeah. Sean. Man, good job putting the podcast together last time, man. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Thanks, Sean. Tell Maya, really thank sure. you too. She did yeah, a great I'm job. Really impressed. Yeah, it looks, uh, looks like us laying on a on a logo. She, yeah, <laughs> she definitely got her talent from her mom. Definitely. <laughs> I, if you've ever seen me draw, I, I have a hard time drawing stick people, so it could be very very difficult. So I was thinking as we were kind of talking yesterday. Sean's out and about, you know, with his his daughter, and I was thinking about like our kids growing up with youth sports, and it seems that they're kind of fading more and more. But just like the importance that youth sports has on on you know our kids and and helping them grow and and develop relationships and like interact with other people, and you know, like Sean, like your your boy was a pretty good basketball player, wasn't he? One of your boys, and then I know your other son was just a stud in, in wrestling, and then now your daughter is flipping all around. Like, what what happened, Sean? <laughs> well, just like your kids got their talent from their mom, my kids got their athletic ability from their mom. Because <laughs> I know it didn't come from me. Was your was your was was your wife an Olympian in her other life, Sean? <laughs> um, no, but her family's pretty athletic. So her dad's her dad's really athletic, which is okay. funny because they don't really play sport traditional sports. But um, they were um, they were all like world class water skiers and downhill skiers. Um, my brother in law um, used to ski with uh, Peekaboo Street. Wow. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah so cool. they're they're very talented. She um she actually my wife was um better at uh water skiing, slaloming and wakeboarding and all that than all the boys in her neighborhood growing up. So, That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, plus she was on the um her high school's version of their dance team. Ours was the Spinnakers. Yeah. If you remember, um, she was on hers. I don't know what they were called. She went to a Olympus high school. Um, so, but my daughter was doing that all day yesterday. I'm, I'm telling you, like I said to y'all yesterday, cheerleading is organized gangs. It is the <laughs> scariest thing in the world to watch these cheerleaders pass by each other and stare each other down. I, my daughter attended one like years and years and years ago, and and I actually cheered for my life. I was very frightened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're wrong. Have you seen some of those uh, cheerleading competitions in the South that break out in melees? Holy smokes! Crazy. They're 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 insane. And then Carl, like I know you're. Have all your boys been involved in track? Because I know you got the one son who's got a scholarship for it. Who? Oh, no, no, I had a. Well, my oldest daughter, she was actually decent in basketball, but she, she, she stopped after one year. I, maybe it's because I was her coach. I don't know. That might have been a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then my son Tyler, he played uh, one one year of little league football. You know how they put the littlest yeah. guy at defensive tackle. Well, uh, that didn't go over so well. But uh, he <laughs> later on, when he was older, though, he he did try a weightlifting. I guess they have a weightlifting team uh, at Pleasant Grove High School where he went, which was kind of interesting. I never knew that 
that was a sport. But yeah. uh, my son's high school had that, and he actually yeah. now has the the re- he's not in high school anymore, but he's on the record board as uh, being able to deadlift the the most uh, per body weight. I think the, the wow. unfortunate thing for my two oldest ones is I didn't. I mean, things have changed since you and I were we were kids. You know, you, you could go. I mean, you could just go out for a sport. You didn't have to worry about paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars mm. and going to yeah. camps constantly all year round just to play one stupid sport. Now, now though, these kids they have to. I mean, almost in every sport, it's the same. And anyway, it, it uh, affected my two oldest, and then and then Eric, he uh, he's the one that runs in college right now, and he. Um, he just thought, you know, hey, I'm bored. He and his friend decided to go out for junior high track. And then he got a really good time in the mile. And he says, oh, I'm actually decent at this. And so um, he decided to go out for the track team after that. And, you know, my my ex said, uh, hey, um, you know, Eric's got a track meet this day. And I'm like, track? What the heck's track? <laughs> So, uh, I decided to go to track meet and it was kind of fun. You know, I, 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 I used to think those guys were big nerds and, um, you know, and of course what's when your son's in it, it makes it a whole lot different. And then, um, you know, nerds have to run for their lives sometimes. So that might <laughs> explain why. <laughs> exactly. Sean. So then, so then I was, you know, I, I, you know, after junior high, I mean, I'd gone to a few invites and then, he started out in high school and he had a really good time. Of, I guess one of his first races in cross country. And, you know, I, I, I asked the coach, I said, so, you know, is there a possibility that, you know, these kids will go get scholarship to college for running? And then the coach is like, Oh, absolutely. And I said, Oh, and he says, yeah, your son's got a chance if he, you know, works really hard and, it's going to, you know, take a while, but he can't have us, you know, a, you know, things like he can't have a job during the school right. year yeah, um, and be really focused. And I mean, I didn't do a whole lot. I, it's like, I wasn't very focused and still I'm not. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but he, 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 uh, he, he wanted to do it. He really loves it. And, and uh, so for the next few years, I, I became Mr. Track Dad and still am and uh, know a whole lot about the sport now. It's been a really fun distraction when I was going through my divorce. And uh, I've been to a lot of different cities and states and invites. And uh, and, now, and he's taking it to the college level. He went to junior college and then and he's at a D1 school called Idaho State, which, yeah, you know, they're – they, they, they're okay. Paid schooling. <laughs> it's paid schooling. That's the only thing that matters. That's yeah. all that matters. Exactly. <laughs> He's going to graduate this spring with a, a degree in microbiology, and then nice. he's going to wow. get a PhD in the next few years, and he still has a graduate year to run at school, and that'll help pay him. And Yeah, I mean, it's his. he's going to have a great life um, thanks to – to a sport running so yeah, you know that's fantastic man <laughs> yeah and I, I think his i think his and i mean i think his uh i think kids nowadays have better shots than they think because i mean okay you and i brent we we imagine being college or high you know i don't i never even thought i was good enough to be an nfl football player or, or uh, nba basketball player not even close but I was like, hey, if I could get into a college and have it pay for part of it, but the the competition level t- to play basketball or football with young men is just incredible. I mean, oh, yeah. you have to be just out of the world to make it. But um, some of these other sports like soccer, lacrosse, um, wrestling. Women's golf. Women's yeah. golf. If you have a daughter, anybody have a daughter, put them in golf. Automatic yeah. scholarship. You you don't yeah. even have to be good. Automatic scholarship. <laughs> yeah, that you're right, Brent. And then, and then, and then you know, cross country and track. I mean, these kids have to be up at five thirty every morning. They run every day. Um, you know, they have to have discipline. 
And then, you know, that translates to good grades usually, usually. And, uh, and, uh, you know, and then if they can't get an athletic scholarship, they get a academic. So anyway, don't be afraid of some of those nerdy sports, as Sean said, because, uh, yeah. they can, they can pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's they, been fun. They absolutely can. I I didn't realize number one. I didn't realize how many sports there are until I became a parent. You know, like I've never <laughs> heard of lacrosse or, or <laughs> rugby or field hockey or any of this stuff. And it, lacrosse is huge down here in the south. I mean, it it is enormous and an awesome sport too. Like hockey it with fishing nets. Yeah. <laughs> lacrosse is really cool. <laughs> it's like you can whack somebody with a net all the time. That's pretty yeah. cool, man. <laughs> the University of Utah has a lacrosse team now. Yeah. They play D1 yeah. lacrosse, yeah. which is really cool. It's not something that was around when we were kids, but it's it looks like it's being embraced up there. Well, it's because it was I remember. the East Coast thing, Sean. I, you know, right. it, it was. Yeah. It was an East Coast sport right. when we were kids. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, Syracuse and Duke and, and North Carolina. And you know, th- those are like the big powerhouses. And yeah, I think like James Madison, a couple, you know, these schools that you don't ever hear of, but they're, it, it's huge. Um, yeah, it's fun. I, well, I remember I... when my boy was four. So I've, I've got to be with, with my boy, but I've also got to coach some of the funnest times coaching. And it, it's incredible. It's so much fun. But w- I remember we took him down to sign up for baseball. He was four years old. And he was too young. And so all they had open was soccer. <laughs> and so like I looked at him like, you want to play soccer? And he's like, eh, yeah, sure. sure. So, so four-year-old soccer, okay, they asked me to be a coach. And, and if any of you know me, you know how much I love soccer. <laughs> but yeah. get these little kids that are that are four years old, barely, you know, four year four year olds, you know. <laughs> And, and they put them on this field, and they have four nets. There's a net on each end, and then a, a net on each sideline. And, and the whole purpose <clears throat> of four-year-old soccer is just to let them go out there and kick a ball, which I thought was faster. absolutely. Yeah, I, I thought it was absolutely stupid. Why would yeah. you teach kids something like that? Because one thing I've known forever: children can learn when they're have, when they have a repetitive action. And so I started, like, in, in practice, we started practicing going for one goal. And so you had four quarters, and every quarter, I would tell them, that's the goal we're going for. Then the next quarter, that's the goal we're going for. And the next quarter, that's the goal we're going for, you know? And by, like, mid-season, our boys, you know, this jumbled group of kids <laughs> on the ball running around, they would start – the ball would go to one net, but that wasn't their net. So they would – slowly turn around and start going <laughs> towards their net you know and and it was it was the coolest thing to watch these little four-year-olds start to understand hey i'm not going for that one i'm defending these other three and that's the one we're putting it in over there yeah and, that's a good i didn't think about that that that, that <clears throat> sounds that sounds interesting maybe i should have put some of my kids in that because uh yeah i i i like you would have kind of scratch my head and go what's the point to this but you anyway, know nice oh, story yeah. and well and yeah, when he was to get their energy out for crying out loud four-year-olds well, geez it is and little well, starbucks parents on the side and stuff but well, well you know, Brent, the biggest I know. Thing when you're that age is um if you can teach them a little bit of um focus like this is this is what we want to do oh yeah go do it you know and they start learning how to work with other kids and i mean one of the greatest lessons in life through sports is learning how to work with each other and also learning how to um win and lose with grace and not you know be a big baby or whatever you know i mean it's losing is not a bad thing no of course oh you just brought up a subject a sore one for me okay so when i was a coach my daughter's team that was years ago um this whole Everybody's got a trophy when a trophy thing started. And that was one of the things that really bothered me. And I think it really bothers these kids, um, especially when they're younger. Um, well, we can't keep score, according to the administrator. Yep. And I'm like, why? <laughs> yes. Well, we don't want them to be discouraged and not want to come out. And I'm like, 
I, I, I looked at him and I was thinking about those years in Kern's recreation basketball where uh, Bill Reiser's team beat me and my team 60 to 14 or some crazy number like that. And I'm thinking, um, Did it scar you for life? It, no, <laughs> but I'm no. just saying, no, you didn't even I care five him. hours later. You care less. <laughs> Hey, I wanted to keep it within 20 the next time we played, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, it just made you work harder, made you want to be better, but the kids ignored it though. Those kids, you know, you'd coach them and they'd be like, Hey, what's the score? I just, I just look over to one of the girls on the bench. Okay. What's the score, Amanda? She's like, Oh, we're down by four. I'm like, okay, great. Great. Get out there guys. (laughs) So, um, yeah, it was, when you don't, don't, when you don't keep score, yeah, it, it changes the way you play the game, too. Because True. if you're ahead, you're probably going to slow that tempo down a little bit. If you're behind or if it's close, you're you're working up different plays. Yeah, it, it's, it's so foolish not to have well, a score. Well, <laughs> Brent, let's talk about your son. Um, and your, I don't know with your daughters if they were as involved, but... I mean, I remember uh, over the last 10, 15, 20 years, you would, you know, comment on Facebook or, you know, I'd talk to you on the phone and you'd talk about your son and, and your son went out for uh, multiple sports, correct? And tell us what was, how did you, tell us how you raised him because it seemed like he had a lot more balance than a lot of kids that I see now. And it was interesting. He gave up some opportunities to just, do something different. Can, can you go kind of through that and kind of explain to the audience what what happened with your son? Well, first of all, he had really great teammates and very good coaches, which makes all the difference in the world. When, when you have a group of boys like we were, we grew up together. We did everything mm-hmm. together. And, that, and that's what he had with these teams that he had was a group of boys that they were always together all the time. They got along. They they had a lot of fun together. Um, I coached him in football when he started at five all the way until he got into, into middle school. And probably the funnest team that we had was when he was nine years old. And, and I'm going to tell you, nine-year-old football is big boy football. It may sound like nine years old. They hit hard and they do things you would not believe. We taught our boys no huddle offense. So at nine years old, they would run a play. The line would get up there, stand by the ball. The the, the um, backfield players would run up, look over to us. We'd do these hand signals and then they'd go. And that, that nine-year-old team, there was a rule in football where if you were – if you were not within 34 points after three quarters, the game's over. We never once played a third quarter and we allowed <laughs> one first down the whole entire year. And, and the way it went in the beginning, it happened a little more. And at the end of the year, we got a little more respect, but so our boys would show up to, as, as you come to a game, you have a weigh in, everybody's got to go on a scale. And if you're above a certain weight, you can only play on the line. Which we had those boys set anyway. And then everybody else was, you know, position players and stuff. So our boys would show up, a bunch of kids, all these other boys on other teams are mocking them and everything. Our boys wouldn't say a word. They just stood straight ahead, went in, weighed in. We got ready. We warmed up. And every time we would always choose to kick off and we would onside kick every time, <laughs> every <laughs> single time we would, we would point to a boy who probably looked like he couldn't catch too well. And that was the target. That was the target. <laughs> and, and and the way the game would go is onside kick, recover, one play for about 15 yards, second play, touchdown. Onside kick, recover the ball. And remember, we're running no huddle offense, so they don't know what's hitting them. I mean, it is quick. Within five minutes, it's 21 to nothing, and they don't even know what happened. And, and that's how it was. Brent, wasn't there a high school coach and and he tried coaching us in college where he would never punt on fourth down? And it was just recently, actually, the guy. Um, high school, Alabama. Yeah, he, yeah, he was down your way. So yeah, yeah. That, 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 Coach Kelly. Yeah, if you he, if you look Coach Kelly up, no on the field internet, goals or extra points either. All two point conversions. 
<laughs> all the scores were like 80 to 14 or 80 to 30. It was crazy. Yeah. Anyway, and, same thing. And even that, his huh? subs kept running it up. And, yeah. and, and his yeah. philosophy, which is brilliant, we teach all of our players to go 100%. Why would I have my third string players not going 100%? What does that teach them? Well, yeah, yeah. I think some of that's translated into some college teams because, I mean, when you and I were growing up, you never, I mean, rarely would see a college team go for it unless it was like fourth and inches, oh, yeah. right? Now you it, see it all the then, time. Even then it was rarely. Right. Yeah, now, now it fun. Fun. If, if you watch a, like, like with the University of Utah, uh, Kyle Whittingham, he goes for it three, four times yeah. at minimum a game now. Well, the, in, in the Super Bowl, the Philly Eagles coach. The he, Philly, yeah. Yeah, he goes for it on anything on, under fourth and five under, you know, at a certain yard line, he goes for it. So, uh, yeah, it's changed. It's changed. But but you were having these guys do that. This was years ago, right, Brent? Just oh, yeah. Not this this is nine okay. years old, learning no huddle off. And, again, it goes over. <laughs> repetition 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 and so well, he, he had football yeah he got mm-hmm. into baseball travel baseball is, is what we got into which that's what our summer vacations were we would go yeah. to atlanta we would go to you know, alabama we would go to cincinnati we would, i mean we traveled everywhere we had the funnest parents had the funnest times at night with these crazy ruckus parents and these boys are just hanging out together and doing boy things and stuff. And it honestly was a lot of fun. But to Carl's point earlier, it cost a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, baseball bat every year, three hundred fifty to five hundred dollars. New cleats, a hundred dollars. Uniforms. I mean, it's it's a lot of money that you have, but it's also memories that that he will have forever and so you know he got into high school um football um great receiver had looks had offers but yep. he, he got into seven on seven football which is the funnest thing in the world to watch it's 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 touch football it's flag football but it is the most smack talk in your face there's rap music playing in the background they're <laughs> they're hitting each other in the head and you're going against like he went up against studs that playing in the sec you know playing corners and stuff like that i mean oh, wow. the talent level was just like I'm just sitting out there going oh my god you know as some of these people um but at the end of the day when it came down to it and, and he had his chances to go to school he says dad I, i've done it my whole life i just i want to be a student now i want to enjoy college and now he's just a gigantic party animal <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he okay. Well, hopefully he gets uh, he 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 enjoys his degree. If he it, what what kind of degree is he gonna get? Marketing. Um, he's, he's going into marketing. marketing. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, well, good. That'll that'll be a good degree for him. So, no, awesome. Uh, that's great. Now, did your daughters play any sports, um, Brent? <laughs> well, so my my oldest, she played sports to make me happy. Uh, and I love her for that. I absolutely do. I <laughs> coached her um, a couple years in, in in girls basketball, and you know what? She she was there every time. She she played softball. She she tried, and she ended up being a cheerleader. She was a cheerleader in high school, um, but she is absolutely brilliant. Like book smart. She went to a magnet school. It's it's for the upper five percent in our area of, of academics to go to, you know, very, very intelligent girl. She gets that from her mom. Thank God. Um, <laughs> you said my it youngest, you say it. Yeah, I know. I, I knew what you were thinking. My, my yeah. youngest is um, she got into dance, but she's not, even though she acts the most like me, she's also the least competitive of all, of all my kids. She just don't care. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she has no cares whatsoever. So, like after living a life of travel baseball and rush, 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 and you know, that adrenaline as a parent, you know, as you're watching your kid at bat or you're watching them play basketball or watching, you know, all that stuff. We went to dance level, uh-huh. not, not to knock it at all or anything like that. You know, I put on my spirit fingers, but it, it's, it's the equivalent. 
<laughs> okay. It's the equivalent of driving 40 miles to watch your boy at one at bat in baseball and then sit the whole entire time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Sean, you've probably seen this, but like you watch your daughters perform and you're into it and you're amped and it's maybe like a three minute performance and then you're there for like, five hours for everybody to get an award like you were saying earlier carl so it's just like well i i no, i i kind of know what you're going through my my youngest son he's he's more of a thespian um he runs but it's not as you know he doesn't love it he just likes the social aspects of hanging out with the team but i love his, too Oh, his, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, no, and well, <laughs> part of the part of the uh, drama lifestyle really bothered him. Um, so he's he doesn't take the drama classes, but uh, he uh, he's been in some school plays. In fact, he's been the lead. In fact, uh, this last one, uh, uh, what was that movie with uh, Silverstone? Um, Legally Blonde. He was he was the UPS driver. Kyle. What? Yeah, he was... Uh, Get he, out of here. Yeah, and so he dressed up in the sexy UPS outfit and struts on stage and does his lines. And the dude just loves to be on camera and uh, and entertain people. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if he can do anything with it later in life, but, uh, you know, it's, it's made him happy and he enjoys it. And, and you were talking about driving 40 miles we don't have to drive that far but um i do i mean uh you know i have been to plenty of these plays sitting in the cramped seats at this high school uh you know um auditorium and um I, you know it's almost over he's he's almost graduated so but uh but yeah those kids too man i mean i you won't believe how much he has to pay to go to uh, a thespian trip, as I call it, to New York this year. They're going to go watch Broadway plays and and wow. it's for his choir. Yeah, that's what it is. Is his uh, choir? But anyway, it's it's crazy, man. But they keep these kids involved, you know. And that that would be one thing where I must admit that, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I mean, I I didn't have as many opportunities. Um, when I was a kid, um, I mean, sure, there were different lessons and different things we learned, but I mean, geez, these kids can do, I mean, they get to do a lot of cool stuff and yeah. except for that COVID period. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of jealous actually, <laughs> to be honest. Well, and like the, we didn't have the avenues that kids have now. And, right. um, but for example, like my boy has been coached in baseball by former major league baseball players. Wow. I mean, he's had lessons from, from former pitchers and, and from former, you know, infielders and stuff like that. And so like, we didn't have accessibility to stuff like that. You know, there's, there was nothing like that at all for us. And then the, you, these groups that you get in that like my son was part of this, it's called college bound athletics. And it's where they helped parents and helped the kids get into school <clears throat> they would get them in front of other coaches they would you know push them and, and get them game tape and hey i got this boy and you know it, i mean it's actively pushing and like this group that he was part of 90 percent of the boys that played got scholarships not all d1 not all d2 some d2 d3 and stuff but i mean they're still getting scholarships and uh -huh. so yeah. Huge push because there's <clears throat> there's so many more schools that offer scholarships that than what we had. You know, you had, I mean, Salt Lake Community College was built when we were what, like probably early teens. You know, maybe just before that. Yeah, but before it was the community college, it was Salt Lake Technical College, and that they Salt Lake changed. Tech. Yeah, they, yeah, they changed the the focus of what the school was. And mm -hmm. it became a community college, and they embraced. They started embracing sports. Yeah. You oh, look at like right. Utah Valley. You know that was what was they were what Utah Tech or something. Or yeah. they were yeah UBC, Utah, something, like or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, one one thing to remember too. You just brought up Salt Lake Community College. Um, 
you know, and when I was growing up, you know, well, these kids now, when you're, when you're talking to them in their high schools and, you know, everybody wants to go, um, well, here in Utah, everybody wants to play for the university of Utah or everybody wants to go play for BYU. And the reality is, well, Mm. you know, the smart kids (laughs) want to go to BYU, but, uh, yeah, there you go. But no, the, uh, the, the, the reality is this, there's so much money that these D one schools have. Um, and, and because of title, what is it? Title eight, um, you know, football takes a lot of scholarships at these D one schools, D two, you know, and the, also the D two schools actually. And, you know, there are fewer scholarships at the track level, baseball level. In fact, you hear all the time that, Oh, well, this kid was amazing in high school and he got a partial, he got like 500 bucks per year. And like $500 is not going to pay for a college yeah. education. So when we were looking at that and when Eric was getting serious about picking a college, uh, one of his former track mates had, had gone on at a college called College of Southern Idaho and basically had everything paid for. And I was thinking, he's not better than Eric. So, uh, hmm. and so then when we were starting to look at the D ones and Eric wanted to look at a D one and I was like, yeah, well, uh, I, I said, just, just keep in, just keep, keep this thought in your head, Eric, the first two years of your school, of your college education are general eds anyway uh right nobody you know cares no one cares yeah. Yeah. yeah and if someone's gonna pay for those two years where you don't have any debt you don't have to go to work um and they they pay you to come pl- you know to their school take it <laughs> and so uh yeah in college of southern idaho they 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 had just started their program a co- you know the year before eric started there um and um you know and they immediately were really competitive in fact uh you know he got to go to several national championship events he he would have never got that experience at most d1s he would have been on the bench um i mean he's a good runner but he's not you know, he's a little bit of a late bloomer, as you'd say, um, in, 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 and so maybe his best, you know, running years are still ahead of him. And, uh, but you know, some of these kids can run as fast as any college kid when they're 15. And so, um, you know, he wasn't that kind of a runner. And so when he had that opportunity at the junior college level, he took advantage of it. And then it got him a D one partial, at Idaho state, but he had the academic chops at that point. And I mean, the kid had a, a, you know, a four Oh GPA going into his last two years of college. I mean, it it makes it a little easier process. So don't dismiss junior colleges as a waste of time. I mean, those, those, those are great opportunities in the right situation. So take advantage of them. If you have kids that, you know, are, are fairly good, um, but aren't superstars, you know, um, if they right. still want to play that sport and they still want to do it, um, there are plenty of opportunities on the JC level. Anyway, had to make that plug. <laughs> I, you know, what, what baffles me, what I don't understand is, you know, we hear all this conversation about canceling student debt, canceling student debt, all that stuff. What yeah. I don't understand, especially when you look at power five schools, they have so much money i mean you 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 look at how much since the university of utah joined the pac-12 look at how much that campus itself has changed there's no need to keep increasing tuition when you're getting billions of dollars off these contracts and if you don't believe me go take a walking tour of the university of alabama and i am telling you you step on that campus, it is one of the nicest campuses in all the country <laughs> because well, of the amount of money that is brought in. Oh, well, you're not wrong. I mean, I yeah. remember I remember my time over at the University of Minnesota. And yeah. there was I mean, there was a, a lot of money there, you know, and everything is gorgeous and beautiful. And part of that is that it's you know, over a hundred years old, and so they've had a hundred years to build all that up, but there's a ton of money and but that big 10 money. Yeah. Funnels yeah. in. 
And, and you're going to see them at BYU these to... upcoming years when well, that Big 12 money question. comes in. Brent, where, why is the money at Alabama going to Saban and the buildings and not helping out the students more? Well, uh, and, and that, that's what I don't understand because you, you built, let's reduce the tuition so we can get more students in, make it an affordable place to go. To bed. I don't know. It, it just makes too much sense, especially since they're state run institutions. Every yeah. child should have a free education in a state run institution. That's no, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, this- who is the number one public paid employee in the state of Utah? Kyle Whittingham. Kyle Whittingham. It's, it's that not for every close, football yeah. coach in every state. Yeah. Yep, exactly. But it's not even close. Yeah. <laughs> Between second place. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's more than the governor of Utah, man. So just think uh, about that. I've seen the governor <laughs> well, he's done of Utah. More. He probably doesn't he's deserve done more. what he's making. <laughs> hey, you guys are dreaming. Kyle, okay. Oh, wait, let's, let's, I, I, let's ask that question. When is Kyle going to retire and are they going to name the stadium after him? No, they won't because uh, that changes the uh, dynamics of donations. But they oh, would they okay. would certainly do something like uh, BYU did and name the field after him, Kyle Whittingham Field at, at Rice Eccles Stadium. I can see that. I can see that, yeah. I can see that with a statue of Kyle out front in his uh, shorts and uh, – and, uh, And his calves. With his calves shining forth. Okay, yeah, he's right. he's famous for his calves, right? And and you know what? <laughs> Honestly, he built that place. Ron McBride started it, but well, hold on, hold it? on, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that, and and a lot of people won't like to hear this. Without Urban, Urban Meyer, Meyer, yeah, there's no Kyle Whittingham. Urban Meyer, I whatever agree. anybody thinks about him at all, at all whatever wife, anybody thinks about him, his wife had big nostrils, man. I mean, you can see him like. Oh my gosh, you scared me. He looked like parachutes. Oh, anyway, but he <laughs> he changed the philosophy of how the University of Utah thought. He yeah. changed everything about it. You're right. He, he changed did. the offense. He brought in the spreads. He and and he's done that everywhere he goes. He changes the philosophy. And look, the guy's got some crooked dirt underneath him yeah he's but, dirty dude but I mean, <laughs> there's no doubt that the guy knows how to get the best out of every player kids you look at alex smith alex smith was a nobody and alex yeah, smith, but, the backup quarterback but but yes. kyle but M- M- mafu uh brought in kyle from byu it was mcbride who changed that loser program into what they are uh, he, he he's the one that triggered the change i mean but let's you guys be clear were, that it was only loser during the lavella edwards oh. years. before that there were no wins from byu okay i mean uh, <laughs> the no, win loss record like, isn't even close <laughs> oh, but they, they peeled off like 10 or 20 games in a row i remember oh, I, I, they I lost was, 10 I was, or 20 in a row i was <laughs> Well, now they haven't. They lost five, five, and they, no. the last one BYU won. Let's they, let's be let's did. be. It was a, it was a nine losing streak for BYU. Come on, get the number right. <laughs> uh, you you Utes always changing history, but I'm so what? go look it up. You, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. It's called you're a record. Just showing you're, you're showing. You're not even you in Utah anymore. You can't right? add up to nine. You've turned but into I SD. still, but I still love the University of Utah. I mean, you grow up with it. You you never take that out. I I watch them as often as I can. Um, you know, I cheer for them as often as I can. But like, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, after paying two kids tuition, I'm a University of Tennessee fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, not about it. Should. And it should be. and there is nothing at all. You guys have to come out. I'm telling you. No. You got to come we to a football talking game. About that. Well, what are we going to do? It so, in fact, that would be a great way. That would be a great podcast. Um, uh, three of us in uh, Knoxville um, a <laughs> night before oh a gosh. game. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know, I hate to disappoint you guys, but um, I, I can't stay up past nine anymore. So it's not like it would be. <laughs> we'll go to an afternoon game. We can do it in the morning, Sean. I'm just, I'm just saying. If you guys are saying, "Oh, let's go out and have 
you know, uh, some dinner and all that. Okay, but no, you know, we'll do I, one of them I'm, afternoon I'm games. In life where I go Tailgating. to four o'clock buffet for for dinner now. Are you your grandpa now, Sean? I yeah, mean, you, I okay, all right, all right. That's, that's the curious. deal that I know. And, and so are you guys. <laughs> you just haven't admitted it yet. Did you just call me Dale? I did. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Gosh, well, better be called your mom. <laughs> well, that's We're, true. <laughs> That's what people We were out last on. night till like 10 30. We got an Uber and everything, man. Which, by the <laughs> way, I love Uber. Uber is like the greatest thing because oh, I don't have the patience to park downtown. <laughs> I could do a whole podcast on being a Lyft driver one, one, one year. When I was going through my divorce. I, uh, I, I drive Uber. Out. Yeah. For some extra you money. Too, didn't you? Yeah. 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 In this town, money. it is so easy to make money in Uber. There's so much always going on. You know, I've taken Uber in Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. It works. It's, it's, it's great, man. I, I, and, um, man, Sean, like since you've been here last, you wouldn't even recognize anything at all. Is that it right? has changed so much. That's crazy. Oh, my God. It's oh, just building. I, last time I was there, there was a ton of construction in downtown. So Still. that doesn't surprise me. Can you can you imagine? So okay, so I don't know. I don't know if Carl, if you've been to Nashville or who, yeah, yeah. Time, who's listening yeah, yeah. has been to Nashville, but not far outside of the where the airport is, is the home of Andrew Jackson, right? So the the Hermitage. Can you imagine Hermitage. those people? Yeah. At, at that time in the 1800s, 19th century, being able to get a a, a preview of what was coming, you know, in a hundred oh years, goodness. and what they would think, uh, oh. it would blow their mind. The fact that they didn't have air conditioning back in Nashville during the 1850s, I would want to live there. They didn't no, have air conditioning, home. but they did have smallpox. <laughs> well, I think you feel better, Sean. I mean, yeah, give me some po- smallpox and, when, and let me die on the veranda. Yeah. When you tour the Hermitage, it still doesn't have air conditioning. So when you go in the summertime, it's like being there in the summertime. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's like being there in the summertime. Oh, yeah. man. But like the way they built the houses, I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's not incredibly miserable. I mean, it's a, it's a little warm, but like, the way they built things then was to accommodate for that. And look, you know, we come from air conditioning and have cool on our skin and all that. If you grew up in that stuff, you you wouldn't be like, oh, that sucks, you know. Oh, it's they, just life. They would it's probably Tuesday. think everything is so cold, you know, an air-conditioned home is freezing. What's wrong with this place? Yeah. <laughs> Open the windows. Get the breeze blowing through here. So what was your point about the hermitage, Sean? I, I kind of missed that. The, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just outside of the downtown. changes it's just outside of downtown so oh could they okay. can you um can you it just for me i think golly can, can it back then if they if they could have seen what that part of the world had become because it was it was fr- that was frontier yeah country oh, yeah. right Man. So much further well, where the hermitage was than that. Way it out. was uh, all uh, territory of the um, Native Americans. So can That's you imagine like Phoenix, like like people around Phoenix? No, and even even in like 1901 or 1902, you know, like not you know 100 I, years ago. I hate to tell you this, but <laughs> from the 60s, I mean, I I've talked to people that moved here. Yeah, um, in the sixties, like St. George, like, it's, a, it's like St. Yeah. George in the sixties. Yeah, no, this, this is the sixth largest city in the country now. Yeah, and in the sixties, yeah. it was uh, like you said, St. George, nothing yeah. here, and that's because uh, air conditioning wasn't big. Exactly, and and well, piping water in. <laughs> my question is, how are you guys gonna survive in the next twenty years when there's no water to drink? There's plenty of water. Oh, where just, where though? <laughs> underground for the, for the back scene for the back underground scene. it's uh in in arizona they they there it's it's kind of amazing here they they pump water into the ground all the time just constantly so there's just there's a lot of uh groundwater down here so plus we don't have uh we don't have um the watering issues down here like you do up there yeah, nobody has lawns yeah, there's no lawns down here i mean the oh, backyards are very common 
Well, but you know, front yards are not. Most people well, don't have a front yard down here. Well, for those people listening and uh, live in Utah, uh, I was reading the, uh, an article the other day in the KSL. They were talking about the Great Salt Lake drying up. And, you know, we already have in Utah during the winter inversions. And, uh, yeah, they're terrible. Some of yeah. the worst air in, in the United in the States. Yeah. Well, they say uh, with the Great Salt Lake drying up, and if that happens within the next 10 years, that the air quality is going to be incredibly worse. Yeah, than you're it all going to get lung cancer. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so I've got to figure out a comfortable place to move that, uh, um, you know, I, I've, I've been tempted, but that humidity, I, just, I, I, I've been in that humidity. It's horrible um, you get, during you the get summer used to it. in Nashville. If you visit it, you get used it's to it, worse. But it's, it yeah. is bad. Well, I mean, it's just I, nasty. Man. I can't tell you the number of times I've been out in the south, southeast. Oh, I know what it's like. And I've got sweat down to my belly button, you know. Uh, my shirt yeah. looks like I pour out and all just drip. It's, it's crazy. But I will say one thing. In the West, well, yeah, in the West, if you go, if it's 105 degrees and you go under a tree, it's still 105 degrees. Yep. That's in the true. South, if it's 90 degrees, which anything above 90, you just want to just die. But die. if you go under a tree, it drops 15 degrees. Really? <laughs> I, I mean, thought it was true. It's cool. Well, you know, and I mean, along that, you're, you're, you're right about that. But it's also um, the shade does help a lot down here just because the intensity of the sun being on oh, your skin. Yeah. You know, it's I was say, dry heat is, is a lot better than humid heat. Right? It is. It, it is. I think it the humidity is affected your brain a little bit. Well, yeah. To, to Brent's point, the heat is still there, but if you don't have the sun on your skin, it makes yeah. a big difference. Cause it, you know, you can go outside here at 10 o'clock at night and it's 90 degrees, but it, it's still, you don't, without that sun burning your skin, it's, it's, it makes a big difference. The cold yeah, here I bothers think, me worse than the heat. Well, let me ask you a question, Brent. In in uh, Nashville, do you guys ever have to worry about air pollution? I mean, is it pretty not a thing that you guys really worry about or concerned about? No, not really. Huh? Because, okay. you know, it, it's no not like you have the high mountains Nashville. that block everything in. Yeah, you're surrounded in a bowl. You, you don't get anything blocking the air from moving over to North Carolina. Yeah, it's uh, and, and the jet streams up above just blow everything out and stuff. We'll have to, but, we'll have to on a future episode. We'll have to talk about some of the. And I know Carl, you haven't you've you've been around to a few places, but not as uh, you haven't been around. No, not as, as much as you, as, as much as Brent and I have. Yeah. Brent's been to every yeah. state in the country. I've been to I think forty five or forty six of the states. So we'll have yeah. to about, talk about some of our travels and. Maybe some of the best places we've been, and some of the worst places we've been. Memphis is probably mm. one of the worst for me. Ooh, yeah. But, um, Memphis. Anyway, here. we're coming up on an hour here, and yep. so, yeah, so yeah. I think this is uh, pretty good, and we'll keep going in the future. And love you two brothers. Yeah, you guys have a great week, and uh, we'll catch you. Catch you next week, possibly. So, <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. Right, thank you all Thanks, who guys. listen and have a great week. Talk. All Talk right. You guys have a great one. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Three Dad Bods podcast. Let your friends know we're on Spotify and Apple. And don't miss an episode. Rock on.